and blessings to you from the Holy Cross Jesuit community and the college chaplains. I am Meg Fox Kelly, and I welcome you to this reflection for Holy Saturday. Today, I offer a reflection on Matthew 28, verses 1 through 10. A little over a year ago, I traveled with an amazing group of Holy Cross students and Emily Rauer Davis, my dear friend and colleague, to Grand Guave, Haiti for a week-long immersion where we would spend the week learning from the 66 amazing children who live at Be Like Brit, a non-adoptive orphanage in southwestern Haiti. As we traveled on the uneven, bumpy dirt roads on our journey to Grand Guave, I couldn't help but to notice the crumbling buildings still in ruins and the stark poverty all around me after the devastating earthquake that had hit Haiti nearly nine years ago. But amidst this poverty and seeming desolation, what I also noticed and what caught me off guard were the beautiful pops of color amidst the small shelters built after the earthquake. I heard music playing, babies crying, and children laughing. I saw people smiling and engaged in conversation. And throughout our stay in Grand Guave, while deeply aware of the economic poverty, I also witnessed immense hope and joy. Each day, our group would spend a few hours at a construction site where we would help to build a home for a family in the community. As our days at the work site progressed, we started to develop relationships with some of the children who lived nearby. Willie was one of these children. Willie was always waiting for us when we arrived, and he would come over and simply sit next to me. He spoke the native Creole, and I only spoke English. But each day, Willie and I would connect. He would sit with me, take in all the sights and sounds, and he would often hold my hand or lean on my shoulder. Amidst the seeming de de devastating poverty surrounding me, Willie was an unexpected messenger of hope. Our reading from today from the Gospel of Matthew begins. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to the tomb. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary the women who accompanied Jesus all throughout his ministry, the women who learned from Jesus, the women who were the friends of Jesus, the women who stood and remained at the foot of the cross to his death, are the first to arrive at the tomb. These two women, most certainly overwhelmed with their own grief over the death of their friend, chose to visit the tomb. And it is these two women who become the unexpected messengers of hope. The women arrive at the tomb and the angel of the Lord tells them to come and see where Jesus was laid and to go and tell the disciples that he is risen. As we, and we read that they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy. These holy unexpected messengers of God, rooted in the hope of the resurrection, choose to not cling to the sadness of Good Friday, but rather to look towards the hope of the resurrection. The invitation today, this Holy Saturday, this day of in-between, is to be people who know the reality of Good Friday and to become people who trust in the hope of the resurrection. Who are our unexpected messengers of hope during these days of isolation and social distancing? Can we live like these two holy women, these first disciples of Christ, rooted in the reality of Good Friday but trusting in the resurrection. I want to end this reflection with a part of a poem by the theologian Bonnie Thurston, titled Holy Saturday. She writes, I love this day of silent waiting, when fasting is over, feasting not begun, when pain is past, but flesh not quickened. This is where we live. This human space, waiting before the cave in the tarnished garden where it all began and ended to begin anew, we hope, forever. Let us offer our prayers to our loving and merciful God for the grace to open our ears and our hearts to the voice of your son who says, be not afraid for I am with you always. We pray to the Lord. For all doctors and nurses, researchers and public servants, we pray to the Lord. 
for the sick and the dying in our communities, we pray to the Lord. For those who have died and those who mourn their passing from this life, we pray to the Lord. And for our own intentions, we pray to the Lord. Gathering all our prayers and praises into one, let us pray the prayer Christ himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. And we bow our heads and ask for God's blessings. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord bless you all the days of your life and grant you peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.